I'll apologize now for the lawnmower in the background. It is the middle of January in Houston and we have to cut our grass. I don't feel like waiting to make this video so I'm just going to deal with the lawnmower. This video here, once again, is on a uh, Sea-Doo um, 230 SP. I have the 2012, the last year they made it. This is actually one of the last SPs that they made. And I'm doing some um, winter uh, maintenance. I had an issue with my lights. Um, not the navigation lights. They were always okay, although I did have to change the bulb up there. Um, and your auto parts store is not going to have the bulb you need. It'll have a bulb that'll fit, but it's not uh, U.S. Coast Guard approved. The U.S. Coast Guard ones have um, better filament. They have more filaments in them, so uh, I'm guessing that'll um, you know, give you a backup opportunity uh, to have a light, whereas the automotive ones do not. So the navigation lights were fine. It was my interior lights that had given me a problem. I have these pretty blue interior lights that I put uh, in the boat. They're LMD, SMD uh, lights. Uh, I didn't add any uh, any additions. I didn't cut any holes. I just they're in the cup holders in here, and they stopped working. So what I did was I ran a uh, lead wire from the battery to uh, one of the lights, and they came on. Uh, lo and behold, it was the uh, positive uh, lead that had the issue so I thought initially that the switch was bad I did some testing on the switch and really couldn't confirm it at the time when I got the time to actually go through it I learned that the switch was okay because I put jumper wires on the uh, connections to the switch and I still did not get any lights whereas when I put a jumper wire on the light all the lights lit up so that let me know that I had an issue uh, somewhere after the light somewhere near the control portion of the light so actually a wire that goes from here maybe to the lights or a wire a lead wire that goes from the power control to the connector so it was either coming in or coming out of this area under the dash here what i did was unscrewed this here four screws dropped it down uh, took the wire tie connection off of the uh, light switch that holds the plug in the back I just slid it off, pull the connection out, look at it, it looks fine, do some testing, figure out what's negative and positive, did additional or further testing, and I was able to confirm that I was getting low voltage to the switch. I was getting anywhere from one to five volts. Most of the time it read one, at one time it did read five. So, what to do? I tested, I left my meter in the plug and figured out which the plug that plugged into the switch and there's additional plugs in here there's four or five of them and I went to see which plug controls that switch once I found the plug that controls or leads to the switch I trailed that back to the positive block which is what I was trying to do is find or this the wires that connect to the switch and to the lights all the way back to its power source well its power source is here there's a wire running from the battery that goes directly to our breaker panel. I already had one breaker burn out and I put a diagram that shows where I moved it to. Well, I had two more breakers burn out and one of them happened to be the navigate, uh, the interior lights. And it says on here, uh, courtesy lights. So, the courtesy lights and the bilge pump appear to have went out. So I hooked it to the bilge blower. And what I did was I made a jumper. So I put two wires into a eye uh, connection. And on the opposite end of the two wires, I put uh, eye, eye connections as well, or eye hole connections. And so what it looked like was at the end, the finished product was three eye hole connections, which is what screws into the breaker. Uh, uh, panel itself and I just jumped it from this center one to these two end ones um, What I'm gonna do is eventually just replace this because I mean they're just going out too quick. That's I'm down Three of them are down now and I'm assuming that they'll all go down you could bypass the uh, breaker because there is a long bar on the breaker uh, that the uh, 
on the panel that the breakers actually connect to or screw into. I don't want to do that. These breakers are necessary. They're going to save my ass, so I don't want to get rid of them. But for anyone with the Sea-Doo Challenger or having issues with your courtesy lights, that was the issue, the breaker panel. Usually it's never something so simple and expensive, but in this case it was. Usually the switches are less dependable. However, as you can see, my switches are fine. The next thing I did here, bilge pump, added a second one. I almost sank the boat in 2018 because leaves, as you can see, near the um, drain plug uh, clogged my bilge pump and it was not pumping out uh, the reason why so much water was getting in is that on this uh, port side I'm sorry starboard side motor uh, had a crack in the carbon seal I highly recommend that you do not uh, run your boat outside or your jet ski or sea do outside of the water at all even when you hook up to the water hose it's just not worth it in this case i had water that was up to the exhaust manifolds on the boat uh, so um, the exhaust manifold is just under this hose here that's how high the water was very scary situation all i had to do was blow into the uh, exhaust or exit a hole on the outside of the boat and that pushed the blockage out and the pump started working right away I continued to run the boat to keep the temperature uh, at a level that would uh, burn off any water on the outside of the engine and luckily no water got on the inside of the engine um, obviously the superchargers were submerged but no water uh, got into my oil I've since changed the oil anyway but I was lucky enough to avoid serious issue so what I did was install a second bilge pump. There's a platform on this boat that it has a more than enough room to put another bilge pump. And that is exactly what I did here. My rule mate 500 gallon uh, per hour pump is working just fine. And I actually prefer that brand. I just went to Walmart and picked up what was there. Typically they had rule mate or maybe it was uh, Academy Sports that had rule mate. Um, they didn't have it when I went there so I got whatever, whatever was there which was uh, an 800 gallon per minute pump uh, made by um, I don't know who somebody marine whatever as you can see it's sitting there nicely and it is already hooked up I use the original uh, hole because the bilge pump space is on that side so I didn't want to have a crisscross because as you know the uh, beautiful uh, muffler is going to sit above all of that. I'll go ahead and tighten down the wire tie there to hold my splice uh, high and dry. My splice is actually siliconed uh, closed and the wires themselves are filled with silicone as well. So if any water was to infiltrate the uh, connection it would not spread the corrosion throughout the wires and if it did I would just fix it that is a very simple plug uh, to uh, repair and make any changes to uh, normally I don't do not like to uh, you know splice into anything but that made the most sense in this application so that's what I did once again that's 800 gallon per hour the rule mate uh, is a 500 gallon per hour and I'm going to drill a hole on the exact identical opposite side of the boat and have the uh, bilge exit for the um, factory pump go out of that hole and once again I have it or will put it on a the opposite side the port side because the bilge pump is on the port side other than that, I have no other news to share with you besides the fact that I, in a past video you've seen that I upgraded the superchargers to the um, to the two fifty five two sixties. Those superchargers now are two sixties. In January, I'm running five to seven miles per hour faster than in the summertime, and so that is um, inspiring me to 
at the external intercoolers, I'm looking at a couple of uh, local um, companies uh, to do it. Typically, we call them intercoolers. The uh, general name for them um, are um, heat exchangers. Um, there's some companies here in Houston that I'm looking to to maybe try out their brand. Obviously, Fizzle is the standard, but um, I feel like uh, paying child support, $700 or $800 per engine, it's almost like one kid is yours, but the other kid isn't, so you have to do for both. Um, luckily, I don't have any children yet, and hopefully I don't get in that situation, but if I do, I'll probably be prepared because having a twin engine boat is 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 not as simple as my spark I'll put it uh, as that so far so good I do plan on changing my carbon seal on my port side I've already changed it on the starboard side the port side doesn't appear to be leaking sometimes I hear or it sounds like it is and, and many times when I take the boat out not a drop of water gets in it so I just keep that in mind obviously with boats and water and things like that you're bound to have some water infiltration however I like to stay on top of that because there are times where I do want to leave the boat in a slip overnight and I don't want to come back to um, a future reef uh -huh. uh, so that's what I'm dealing with right now this project uh, has been uh, very challenging space wise reaching all the way back in there to unscrew the uh, bilge holes was a pain in the butt I actually had to lay on uh, the engine that's interesting that hose looks this hose looks like it is uh, sucked in I'll show you here yeah, it kind of looks sucked in I don't know what's going on there I'll have to take a look at it um, but yeah, I had to lay across the engine and it was very uncomfortable to say the least. In order to get your exhaust uh, muffler out, you do have to remove the hose. And that's probably why it looks like that now, because it's not in place. So that's what I've been up to. That's what I've been dealing with. It's been a lot of fun. This is a project that I wanted to do for quite some time now, and I'm actually very excited to finally get to it. Once again, sorry about the lawnmower. I just noticed that I was twisting the camera, which is another no-no. But hopefully, if you have any questions, I can help you out. And I get to the uh, intercoolers, the external intercoolers uh, project soon. That would be nice to share with you guys as well. It's not too challenging to take the current intercooler out and seal it off and install the new one. So the motivation once again behind that is the boat runs incredibly well in cold water. And if I can maintain those performance uh, increases when the weather uh, creeps up to 70 and 80 and 90 and the water temperature creeps up to 70 80 and 90 uh, and that would be nice to uh, you know maintain some decent speeds because it does get relatively hot in here one thing I did think about doing was uh, installing a second uh, fan uh, primarily because I would like to keep it running to try to keep the moisture level in here uh, low as low as possible that's another reason why I keep an eye on the water inside of the hole because once this area gets hot it definitely produces uh, um, steam or higher moisture and when you're trying to suck in air for your high performance uh, engines you don't want uh, much moisture in that air you want it to be as dry as possible so if you're gonna have superchargers or some kind of performance upgrades you're definitely gonna want to make sure that you have the coolest driest air you can get and all the little things like for instance I do not run 87 in here if I plan on taking long trips 
if I know that I'm gonna burn through all the gas in my boat then I'll go ahead and put 87 in there but I won't go above 35 or 40 miles per hour because I know that I am not doing the right thing however majority of the time when I do feel like I want to keep up with my jet ski friends then I definitely put in the 93 or the 92 and I run this thing like a scarlet dog this boat has been great to me I picked up the boat with 65 hours on it right now we're at 239 hours and everything seems to be going very well one thing that I definitely need to do and something you guys can help me with is can someone please help me uh, get a spare key for my boat? From what I understand, Polaris makes the same key and you just have to get it cut. I just need a little motivation behind it. Um, I also figured out a new way to cover the boat. Um, right now in this video, there's no carpet. My seat cushions are all out. I've been stepping on it. So it looks relatively dirty. But actually it's not. This will all just spray away very, very quick. And in the process, I get to keep most of my seats uh, stored inside. And I don't have to worry about getting this uh, stupid mold and tree sap on the boat. But one thing that I have come to uh, appreciate is covering my boat. I, I, I use three tarps now. And what I do, uh, because I don't have the uh, factory uh, snap uh, bow covers... What I do is I actually take one tarp and lay it from the outside of the boat where my bumpers are and I lay it over the, the mirror and let it come straight down to the floor and I let it wrap up about to right here. So that whole side and the floor are covered by the tarp. Then I take another tarp from the opposite end and do the exact same thing. So I no longer try to run a beam across or a tarp across the bow of the boat, stern of the, uh, sorry, the bow of the boat. And what that does is when it rains, I don't get a sagging tarp. I don't get cutting. I don't get any issues. I don't have to prop it up or any of that. It rains. The rain hits the tarp. It collects in the middle, runs down to this hole and it goes bye bye uh, and it doesn't touch the boat until it gets down in this area uh, because the boat is sloped this way so all the water runs this way and when it begins to pull up that's when it'll find its way through the seam of the tarp and get onto the uh, floor and then go ahead and leak out the back of the boat that seems to be working very 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 well for me and um, you know, I've never seen anyone do that before, and uh, if you never thought of that, I give it a shot once again. This is a 24-foot boat, so um, theoretically you get a 24-foot, two 24-foot tarps, and cover half the boat with one, half the boat with the other, tie them down, make sure the boat is pitched right. When it rains, the rain will eventually find its way to that hole without getting on any of your seats or any other part of your boat floor. It's been working out very well. I'm going to do some reupholstering on the boat because the tree sap has just ruined my seats um, to the point where I'm just you know, very disappointed. Can't wait until summer gets here. That's all I have to share for now. I'd have to put this. I noticed that this cover is not on my bilge pump connection so let me take care of that once again 2012 sea sp lots of fun